A very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us here on Plus TV Africa, where we take a look at the papers at this time of the morning. We call it After the Press. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I have joining me to help uncover what's behind the headline, uh, Adat Njamanze, Public Relations Practitioner. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll start with a punch newspaper this morning. Expectedly, a dose stage is here. The big one is... Oshomole Obaseke extend war to Gov's varsity certificate. It has two rider. Contact UI to confirm Obaseke's certificate. APC chair direct, directs panel. Tell Nigerian varsity you attended. Edo Gov tells predecessor. That's... Um, the whole drama going on in Edo State. But before we get in, I'd like to speak on it. Uh, let's look at uh, the top of the paper, just above the masthead. We have Katsina anti-banditry protesters Bon Buhari Masari's billboard. We also have um, Taraba killing trial. Activists, lawyers, Lapun Malami over exclusion of killer soldiers. Um, I don't know if Ada has been following that story as well. And then uh, just above that, you will see um, 6.46 million on estimated billing face meter price hike. That's um, on page 21 after the paper. Let's go to the bottom and see. Um, uh, don't forget the COVID-19 update on there to take a look at it if um, you want to stay up to date with the latest figures. There you have it. Um, Judge Floyd is also making the front page this morning. Hundreds in attendance as Judge Floyd buried Nestor Mother in Houston. Um, that's um, quite a sad uh, situation in the um, U.S. for now. Uh, let's see. Osho lecturers demand 30 month arrears of half salaries. Burundi president dies of heart attack at 55. Strike, FG approves health workers' hazard allowance insurance cover. And then, of course, we have uh, Tinubu denies fighting Arigbe Shola. Lagos APC bans party groups. Ogunman arraigned for raping fiscally challenged girl. Reps demand probe of Nigeria's 77-day detention by Chinese firm. All right, Ada, uh, let's just let you have your way. Which of these headlines would you want to take on? Edo, Edo State. Um, I think everybody's talking about Edo State. Um, we never actually believed it was going to get to this point uh, between the governor and his predecessor. And every week is a new story. Now we're facing the issue of the varsity certificates and you know verification. Um, to be fair, the national chairman is insisting that despite his issues with the governor, he's insisting that they don't want to go through the same issue that they went through with Biosa states where the candidates submitted form. So that is why one of the reasons why he made this statement yesterday during the inauguration of the screening committee to be very thorough um, in vetting all the candidates and making sure that um, all documentations are authentic and original without having these issues because according to him, if this is if this gets to the election and we start querying and I say this is not original, it's going to fall on the national chairman. Yeah, and but there are those on the other side of the fence that are actually saying that I mean it's still a political um, strategy, a political gimmick, because this man went through the same verification exercise before he became governor the first time around. What is so strange about his certification now, aside from due diligence, which is necessary, like what you were saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, I mean, like the um, communications uh, special advisor to the governor said, Mr. Osage, he said, this is not the first time. So why are you bringing it up now? This, I mean, he passed through this same process, just like you said. So why are you bringing up? These are just different issues just to discredit the governor and have your own candidate. So I, I, I want to see what will play out because this has been months of tension building up. Building up. And so we're looking forward to the primaries. Uh, we want to see, some people might say this is a case of what happened in another state during the last election. But I'm looking forward to seeing what will take place. Um, 
if everybody is open-minded to just allow the elections flow they've chosen a direct uh, primary oh. so and that is still in contention <laughs> but yeah. uh, let's let's pick your brains on your opinion on what's happening in the United States as at present. Uh, George Floyd is um, epitomizing the black struggle um, in the United States. Uh, do you see an abating, I mean, um, a, um, a reduction in the level of protests that's ongoing, or you see it escalating? I, I think it has already escalated. It's something that has gone beyond the 51 states in America. It's in Italy, Belgium. It's in countries that are taking down statues. You know, it's gone beyond what we expected. Now, but the question now is, we've had some of these situations in the previous years. What were the changes that were implemented to actually back up this, um, this uh, protest? So. I mean, gradually, we've started seeing some of the states take certain police reforms in, in, in the United States. But I'm looking, forward to, um, I'm looking forward to more opportunities in companies. I'm just looking forward, forward to more diversity. We need that. It's, not, it's, it's beyond. We need to establish an environment where the young black people are not scared to voice out their opinions or scared to look behind their shoulders because the police might be after them. I, I watched something yesterday on BBC, a campaign where young black Americans were speaking about being black in America. And it was, it, it was very depressing. So the good thing is voices are being heard. And let's hope that uh, results take place. Another issue in the front, on the front burner is the um, continuing rape molestation mm. of both the young and the old. It doesn't matter your age now. It doesn't matter that the people that are, you know, committing this crime are people who you expect to trust. Yeah. Uh, this headline says, Ogun man arraigned for raping physically challenged girl. Uh, the other one um, on the news earlier this morning was a father arraigned in Abuja for raping his four year year old daughter when you look at the agitation now when it comes to the issue of rape across Nigeria um, uh, the momentum is building do you see a sustenance and you know a positive response in the form of the legislations that we have being replicate uh, replicated across uh, the country you know it's I, I think when it comes to the rape situation I, like I was telling somebody I said look there is a need for re-education of um, of sexual um, violence, consent. There's a lot. We've okay. We've had situations where even some of the legislators were talking about what um, what, what were you wearing. So it's it's uh, we need to even start from the high the highest. Well, they, they, they've started a campaign themselves. Yeah, you know, is that but, is that a good thing? But we we've had these campaigns previously. What has been the outcome? My my again. I say I ask certain questions like what are what are the what's the job of the Ministry of Women Affairs? You know, we, we you're there. Elevate our voices. It's sad. It's a very sad situation. I tell people that look, at least ninety percent of women have been sexually harassed. Let's not even talk about the percentage of rape. And then you also have situations where even for people are okay. Even the, um, the 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 victims that are speaking out now, how many of them are being met with open arms? There's still a level of stigmatization. There's still a lot of issues. Even the even the, the, the police people that are supposed to protect you go to the station, they're telling you uh, where why you go there. So when you have when you don't have the type of protection you need, why would you speak out? So it's an issue that even the legislators need to look at beyond their wars. It's not just about saying, oh, we're going to set up this committee, we're going to implement this change. We need to see action. We've been talking, we've been talking, we've been talking for years. I mean, this, um, when it comes to sexual violence, it's something I'm very passionate about because I've had, I've seen, I've had encounters with certain victims. And the trauma is real. The trauma is there. People are living for 10 years, 20 no, years that, with there this There is clear evidence that, of course. You uh, know, the, so the, I feel like right now, there are campaigns. We are protesting. People are speaking out. But let it be backed by action. All right, let's move on to uh, the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, the big one on the front page is again a do state COVID 19 versus primaries. A do APC factions fight over Abbasaki's uh, Gazette. 
Uh, Shomole inaugurates screening committee, says party must avoid Bialsa scenario. Ana confirms direct primary for APC. That's uh, confirming uh, what you said. But you do know that there is a gazette in, um, in place in the States uh, to curtail the gathering of more than 20 people uh, by the state governor. How, how do you see that playing out? That's another thing because, you know, I was saying how does INEC want to play this out because of the current situation that we're facing now. And INEC is working towards even releasing more information on that. I, again, I, I, with the Edo politics, I'm just scared that what we think might not happen. Like something else. That, because there's a lot of controversy, there's a lot of drama, and um, even with the INEC, even INEC said it that things have been, in, have been put in place and nothing is going to change. You know, they've, they're ready to accommodate um, what the situation is and make sure that everything goes smoothly. So we're looking, we're looking forward to that. All right, let's see other stories here. We have COVID-19, three Gombe commissioners, five legislators, special advisor, test positive. El Rufai opens churches, mosque for Sunday Jumat services. Fear of mysterious deaths grip Joss residents. Anti-piracy war, UN commands Nigerian Navy, Namasa. And uh, underneath it, of course, we have... Um, the picture that's what a thousand words members of the coalition of civil society during a protest against the incessant rape uh, a picture can tell you um, more than words the passion behind um, the outing there um, we also have mother of 13 gives birth to quadruplets in zaria no war tinubu aribishola say I have no presidential ambition, that's Arebe Shola. Lagos APC dissolves mandate forum, justice group, others ahead of 2023. Burundi president dies of heart attack at 55, that's another one on the front page. Let's take a look at the Tinubu Arebe Shola scenario. You know, Arebe Shola has always been um, a political son. <laughs> to uh Bolatinibu. so it, it so when the story started circulating even the um, a statement was released from the Tinibu family stating that there's no no war nothing um it's always love he's always a pal um, he's always been a, a welcomed uh, um, political fam a member of the family but when it when, i think the issue came up from the dissolving of the faction i think that was where the story because it was set up by um, so, and Tinibu states that, look, this is dissolved just for, it's for political, um, it's for, for political, not for political sentiments, but you know, we're trying to basically build something new. So it's just nobody should have to deal with this uh, factions for now. If you're dealing with these factions, you're in violation of um, the party rules. So it doesn't have anything to do with um, Arib Ari himself. He said he's always a fam a welcomed um, member of the family. No hard feelings, nothing, you know, no issues at all. Okay, what, what worries you about this increasing number of, uh, you know, um, key figures being confirmed to have COVID-19 in this country, especially with the relaxation of lockdown across board. We hear that interstate travel is going to resume, churches, masks are already operational. And then you, you hear things like commissioners, the Abbey State uh, governor was the latest uh, big fish to you know, get the virus. What, what's your concern when it comes to COVID-19 management uh, in Nigeria? I think, we're, I think NCDC is doing a great job but we, the citizens, are a little bit relaxed. Um, you still have a lot of people who do not believe that it's, the COVID-19 is real. And I tell people that sometimes, I think what works in Nigeria is uh, visual representation. You know, when we see videos, when we see pictures. So we've been working with the international images. We haven't seen the Nigerian one. And when you have to convince people that this is real, I, there was a medical doctor who came out on social media some days ago. She was very upset and she said, we are at the front lines. Every single day we see people being wheeled out in body bags. And yet, I would have people tell me that this is not real. Maybe the media houses should cover, should come to the isolation centers and cover this, this more. So we have people that, first of all, do not believe that there is um, COVID-19. And then you have the issue of poverty. This is, and this is why, in, why in a country that if you don't go out, 
You won't survive. So when you tell people to stay in indoors, there is COVID-19, there is little um, education on what COVID-19 is. How do you expect people to take those rules? And then now to our leaders, like you mentioned, some of our leaders are not taking the necessary precaution. You know, everybody feels that I think my system, I have a, I have a strong immune system. So why would that? It's beyond wearing masks. It won't touch me. Exactly. There was a picture of the vice <laughs> president the on, on one of the covers yesterday inaugurating the yam, uh, um, the yam thingy in, in, in Benue State yesterday. And somebody said, now you see that we could do these things without being physically present. But with some of these governors, they want to be out there. They want to be seen. They want to still go about their duties. They want to still shake hands. And that is where some of these issues come from. You're not immune to this. Everybody can get it. So that is the issue. All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper now. Um, confusion over bead round for 57 oil fields. That's uh, on the front page. Uh, DPR assures investors of fairness. Niger Delta demands right of first refusal. That's it um, on your screen. And then you have a Senate steps down 10.509 trillion naira revised 2020 budget. It has two riders. Knox presidency over omission of 186 billion naira held vote. Probes Mari bound paper mills. That's it to review importation of published books. Uh, there is uh, COVID 19 cases in Nigeria captured on the front page as well. Um, underneath the screamer, let's start with the blue box um, on your screen now. Uh, it says, refugee crisis in Nigeria, Cameroon, eight others, world's most neglected. Lawan decries diversification of ecological funds. El Rufai urges proper management. And then again, Bajabia Mila opposes estimated billing for electricity consumers. Dons to screen certificates of Obasaki, five others. The floor is yours. You know, with the Senate, with the budget, um, I do understand where the House of Reps uh, are coming from because that 186 billion that was omitted was from the 500 uh, billionaire for the COVID uh, relief funds. And what is included in the budget is 300. Uh, 300 billion plus now you are excluding 186 and so the 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 speaker is saying that look we don't want a situation where when this is put together people nigerians will call out and say oh this budget was padded take this back you need to be thorough you need to be responsible in making sure that every um sector is accounted for with the right budget so even as of yesterday they were as they had already spoken to the finance minister and were expecting more um, expecting a letter with the adjustment so it that's why the budget is being on hold look everything has to be accounted for we cannot be accused of padding the budget it's, you, you don't take out a 186. Why? And then, so these are some of the questions that they are saying that, look, everything has to be in accordance to the Constitution, that everything is accounted for. So, okay. Uh, which is the headline? Would you want to just write on a little before we wrap things up? Um, um, there is the refugee crisis in Nigeria, Cameroon, eight others, world's most neglected. We also have Lawan decries diversion of ecological uh, funds, RFI urges proper management. Again, uh, Bajabia Mila opposes estimated billing for electricity consumers. Yes, you know, the electricity, uh, uh, the le electricity um, estimation is another problem. Um, the, re the regressive body, sorry, NEC, they've be they had said that they were going to penalize at least about six uh, discos, reason being that they had already released a, a memo stating that you, you, I, you need to stop estimating bills, provide meters to every customer who has requested for a meter and who has paid because we've had issues where customers keep reporting estimations. The estimations are out of this room. We were in lockdown for almost two months. 
and people didn't go to the offices, and yet they come to the offices and they are seeing a C2 um, a, a, a bill for custom. And so this is what uh, Nick is trying to say, that your, your estimations do not help. Your estimations are over the roof. Provide the meters. Mm -hmm. And there's a deadline. A deadline was given in April, and then till June, yes. people are still getting that. So they are saying, we will penalize you. You need to answer to why this situation has not been solved. And then, Jamanze, thank you very much for thank your time you. on thank you. the program. Thank you. And thank you for watching. That's a wrap on the newspaper review this morning. It returns same time tomorrow. Do keep a date with us. My name is Felicity Ezewike, wishing you a lovely day.